Hello everyone and welcome to this video on integrating Power BI with other applications. I am Tim Weinzaffel and I am doing a host of videos showing you how you can integrate Power BI with other applications. Applications such as SharePoint, such as Power Apps, Teams, Power Automate, even PowerPoint. So we're going to go through, the, uh, through a number of examples. This is episode two where I will be working through uh, SharePoint. So to give you um, a quick overview of where I plan on going with these videos, you're going to see all these different areas where you can integrate Power BI with SharePoint and you know PowerPoint and Power Apps. I even got Teams down here in the corner, and I'm going to be doing videos on um, across all of these topics. Uh, this is uh, episode two. On, uh, we started with SharePoint. Uh, this is episode two, combining files in a folder. If you missed episode one, I showed how you can connect Power BI to a SharePoint list. So highly recommend you checking that out. Uh, and uh, combining files in a folder is a great way to, a great use of, of Power BI to do that. Um, I will say that you can do this same thing in say OneDrive, but because we are focusing on integrating with SharePoint, um, we will stick with that. Uh, so let me give you an example on what I mean by this. So I find that this is a very common situation that um, folks come into. And let me jump to a, uh, a, a library here. Let me jump to this one right here. Got a folder. What I've got here, and I'm actually going to delete this. We won't need that for right now. We'll be coming back to that. But what you have here is a folder with a number of files. So let's say in this example, I am tracking uh, my sales files every month. So say I have a, I'm grabbing that data, and here I've got January, I've got February, March, uh, April, and then you know eventually would have May and so on. So these are all files. These are all coming out of a you know a similar format. And what I want to do is I want to combine them. Now, this is great in Power BI. Um, what I want to be able to do is not have to connect to each one and then combine it. I want to also set this up so that as more files are added, then it automatically gets integrated into my report. Very easy to do. So let's jump over to Power BI and I will show you how this can be done. So I've got a sample file, a uh, desktop here. And what I want to do is let's go ahead and connect to that folder. So I'll go up here to get data, go down to more, and let me look for my SharePoint connector. And again, you'll see the SharePoint folder and then the online list. This is the connection that I used in the first episode, but for this one, we're gonna connect to a folder. So I'll go there and hit connect. Now it's gonna ask for my site URL. And in this site, what it is looking for is just the site, um, the initial site itself. So I'm going to go ahead and cap, uh, um, copy and paste that in. You do not need, and you do not need to put in um, any of the extra information. Will actually not work. Um, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. Um, let's see here. This is actually a good example. I run into this all the time, where sometimes it wants the backslash in your SharePoint site. Sometimes it does not. Why that is, I don't know. If you know. Uh, had, had it in the comments, I'd love to know. Um, so here I have, I've connected to uh, my SharePoint site and it's already pulled in a bunch of um, files. I'm gonna go ahead here to transform data. And I'll go into Power Query because what I wanna do is, in this case, I've got a whole bunch of files here that I don't want and I wanna filter down just to my folder. Um, in my example, I, um, it's actually quite easy because I don't have a lot of files uh, and this is quite simple. I'm gonna go here to my folder path and I am just going to filter, I'm going to deselect, and because I don't have a lot of, of different um, folders, I can find quite easily, here's the one I want, monthly Excel files. Um, if you find that you have a lot of files, maybe a lot of folders, you might have to do some additional text filtering, but again, it's getting down to, I'm selecting the folder that I want. So I'll do that, and you'll see that, um, I'm actually going to need to refresh this because I did delete that book one. Um, so now that I have done that, you'll see there are the four files that I have in that folder. All I have to do now is if I go up here to content and you'll see this uh, button here and this is the combined files. So if I click on this, what it will do now is ask me for 
to pick one of the files to use, which is what it will do to kind of sample the layout and the column and so on. It is by default pulling the first file and you can see it's these files only have three, day, um, three columns, so I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, where this really works great is when you have files that all have the same file, the same format, same number of columns. You can run into issues if, uh, if the files, say, have different columns. It, um, again, uh, sometimes it throws an error. Uh, let's say that uh, one of your files has a different, um, you know, say a different format. It's got a header, you have some additional rows that you have to do some cleaning. So this really works best when you have files that are all in the same format. Um, because what it's going to do is it's going to use that first one to create some of these steps. So um, just keep that in mind. So what you'll see here is all of my files only have the three, the three, uh, the three columns: product name, sales date, and sales amount. So it pulls that in here. What you'll, what it also does though is it adds in this column called source name. You can see then here is all of the um, the 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 actual files and the sources. I don't have a lot of um, data in these files, so you can see that. Um, you can delete, you can remove this. Let's say you don't need it. Um, you might find that you want it because maybe you want to be able to filter to certain files and so on. So in my case, I am going to leave it. The only the other thing you'll notice is that what it does is behind the scenes is Power Query will create these, these helper files here. Um, and it creates a custom function. Uh, I'm not going to go into it. I actually find that I never need to go into these the, the custom function or the details here because it pretty much does everything for me. The only thing I would suggest is it does create this sort of um, this grouping here. I tend to rename this just so that if I'm having several of these, I know which um, what these helper files are for. So let me go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and call this. Let's just call this this overall um, data called, I'll call this sales data. And then what I'll do is I will go over to here, double click, and I'll just say helper queries for sales data. And then I can just kind of minimize this, kind of do a little house house. I'm keeping, but again, not going to drill into that uh, because it, it, for purposes of this, I don't really think it's needed. Uh, I will go ahead and close and apply. The great thing about this is because I'm connecting to that folder is if I were to add in, say, uh, the May data, and it was the same type of data set, same format, it would then, and I refresh the data, it would pull it in. So if I go ahead and pull in a, say I just pull in a simple data table here, and I pull in, say, the source name and so on, it's going to be pulling that information from my data set. So, um, let me show one, one additional trick which you might run into as well. Um, so in my case, let's say I'm just using this folder for these, for these files. It's great. I connect to the folder and then combine the files. But you certainly could run into situations where this folder contains additional files. So let's say I'm just going to go ahead and let me just make a, um, I'm just going to add a, 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 a quick and dirty, um, a, a bogus file here. I'll just create a simple Excel file. And I'll go ahead and close that. So now I've got book, you know, .xlsx. Let's say I've add some more documents and so on. I've got additional files in this folder that I, I want to exclude. Because now if I jump back to my uh, query here and I go ahead and I hit refresh, because it's pointing to that folder, um, it's actually going to go ahead and show, it's going to actually pull in that additional um, uh, and you'll see here it just appeared, it, it, it pulled in. Now, it didn't throw an error in my case, but let's say I had other files in here, different formats. You might then start running into um, errors in your uh, in your Power Query transformation. So um, what I'm going to do here is let's jump back to uh, Power Query here. And this is a step I generally do anyways if I anticipate I'm going to have a folder with uh, additional files here. Um, let's go back here. I'm going to go back to the beginning if, um, so where I started is the source here and then I filtered the rows and then all of these additional steps got added um, by going through those steps. I'm actually going to add a step in between filtered rows and then this other one by, um, let me first refresh this so you can see now I'll, I'll get that book one. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm in the filtered row step, I'm going to add in a step by filtering my data. So let's say in this case, I've got all these 
I'm going to do a text filter. I tend to use these quite often. And I'm going to say, I don't want to be checking all these because then as more files are added, I'd have to go ahead and, and, and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and text filter. And I'm going to do begins with. Uh, I'll insert step. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I want to know where it begins with. And now I'm looking for my pattern, right? I'm just going to say sales data. So depending on your situation, you might have to do either begins with, ends with, contains. Um, so again, you might have to be creative there. But just by adding that step in, boom, it's gone ahead and it's filtered that out. I can close and apply. And then it will go ahead and remove that extra um, file that I've added. So, and that's it. I mean, great way. Um, as more and more files are added in, they'll appear, um, provided that they follow that parameter. So, um, hope this was helpful. This is, a, again, a, a, this is just a fantastic way to go ahead and combine files. Um, and uh, in SharePoint, again, what I said is it does work in uh, OneDrive as well. Um, but again, uh, so hope you found this helpful and I will have more videos following on and another one in SharePoint and then as well as we dive into some of the, inter uh, the other applications. So make sure if you like this, make sure you subscribe and thank you very much.